everyone, Stan Heller here. You know, whether you are a swing trader or a long-term investor, our graph analysis shows the near-perfect indicator displays ideal entries and sound choices for when to exit a position. In this short video, I will show you how you can carry out a manual backtest that shows spectacular results over a three-year period. So here is my own manual backtest. Uh, run from January 2nd, 2019 to June 24, and you can see the percent winners is 67%, the ARR 136%, the CROR 65%, and the max drawdown a very acceptable 20.7%. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how to conduct your own manual backtest. Now, I did use the primary wave VectorVest fastest signal to enter any new positions. So you can see the uh, down triangle show the primary wave down. So we took no action during those signals uh, to buy stocks. We would just manage the portfolio and sell anything that hit our sell criteria. And the green arrows are where we would be buying if there was an opening in our portfolio. All right, so from there, uh, you do need a search to, uh, to run this back test. Now, I used a ProTrader search. ProTrader is an add-in module to VectorVest that allows us to do uh, all kinds of technical studies, including these moving average crossovers. And so I wanted to see that five-day moving average of relative timing crossing above the 40-day moving average of relative timing within the last three days. So here's under date time we have three days ago. The five-day moving average of RT is less than the 40-day moving average of RT. In terms of price minimum and vol average volume minimum, you can set your own. This is what I've used for this Canadian backtest. In the US, I would use a little larger minimums for price and volume, uh, but I think this works fine in our other VectorVest countries as well, Europe, Australia, and the UK. Now, if you don't have the ProTrader plugin, you can call support and take a 30-day trial, uh, or you can use the new buy stock search found in the trends, new stuff, and that will give you some very good uh, positions to consider for this portfolio as well. All right, so from there, I'll just show you the graph setup very quickly. I did do a, a, a brief video showing you how to set up your graphs in the way that I've got this graph set up here uh, with the near perfect indicator uh, layout. Uh, you can go to the VectorVest YouTube channel, search for the near perfect indicator and you can find it that way, or the link is here in the slides that you can copy down and uh, add it to your, uh, your, your Google. All right, so here are the indicators that we're using, uh, the values that we're using over here on the left. You have got it noted on the graph, the 5, 8, and 13 EMAs, which really is the EMA squeeze trading system. And I've added some arrows where the system would have generated a sell condition uh, with the five moving average, uh, EMA moving average crossing below the eight and 13. And here is the five moving average of relative timing crossing above the 40 moving average of relative timing. That's our entry signal. And it's nice when you get this confirmation of a buy rating we get the 5, 8, and 13 EMAs fanning out, and we get a move above the 60 moving average of the high price and the 60 moving average of the low price, which is what we've created this channel in black. So again, uh, in the manual backtest, you will choose the exits that suits your investment uh, style. If you're a swing trader, this first arrow when the 5 moving average of RT crosses below the 40, that would be your potential exit right there. Uh, if you're a longer term investor, you might wait for the EMA squeeze condition to turn bearish, such as it did here. Uh, but because we have the 5 moving average sloping up to the right, 
quite strongly above the 40 moving average on the stop prices, uh, you can hold into your position longer. Maybe you would sell half your position down here or here, but you can hold, let your winners run and hold your position longer. My sell through this back test was primarily when the 5 EMA crossed below the, uh, the channel, the 60 moving average of the low prices down here. So that was typically my exit. Uh, you can also wait for the 5 moving average on stop to cross below the 40, or you can wait for the sell rating signal given by VectorVest. So those choices are up to you. Uh, the MACD gives you a little more insight and confirmation. We use the 245518 MACD. You'll notice that the MACD histogram bars are quite a bit larger than the, the usual bars, and the duration of any trend is quite a bit longer as well using this setup, so I prefer that kind of a setup. All right, so now we have our search. We have our graph layout. We can go ahead and show you how to run your manual back test. So I'm going to open up VectorVest Canada. Again, you can do this in any of our countries, but I've already done it here in the Canadian market. This is the, uh, the equity curve of my portfolio back test. And again, the primary wave signals on. These are the timing signals up here at the right. You do need the auto timer uh, to use the signals. If you don't have the auto timer, you would just rely on the moving average crossover, the 5 and the 40 RT. Uh, but it's nice when you can buy only when the market is also moving up. So uh, uh, you can call our support team about a trial to the auto timer. I like to add the timing in my back testing and portfolio manager. So here it is here. We use the primary wave and I can toggle them on and off as well. All right, so here is the setup. So I'm going to just edit this setup so I can show you the details and then we'll start a new back test just to show you the steps that are involved. And if you struggle with it at all, just remember under videos, there's a, an educational piece here for the manual back tester and you can just click on that and watch a short video. All right, so let's uh, open this up. So this is our trading system right here in the middle. And when I left click on the customized trading system, I can show you the setup for this. So our primary wave is uh, selected in under the market timing. You can see it here. And here is the uh, criteria for the primary wave up and down. And then we can click on next to go to the automation rules when we're looking for up market conditions. And our search is going to be that search that I showed you in the slides. Now in the manual back test, I do set a default stop criteria. You know, sometimes you're going along and you've got a few stocks written down on your sheet of paper with their exit prices and you might miss a stock. Well, if it gets to a sell rating, in VectorVest, I want to make sure that it's sold. So we just set the stop for rec equals the sell. Right. And then there are more settings. We're trying to maintain a 10 stock portfolio. We will automatically replace closed positions. So even though we are um, not using an auto, uh, auto system, automated system for selling, we can use the automated purchase system whenever the five crosses the 40 in our search. We don't limit the number of positions opened in a day. We can open all 10 if we have 10 open places. When entering the primary wave uh, up signal, we don't close any open positions. We uh, check the box, don't close any open position. We are investing the average value of the portfolio. We won't purchase the same stock for five days after we just sold the stock. So that criteria is there. And under the maximum stocks per industry, I chose to limit it to four stocks for an individual industry group. All right, and that's the basic setup um, for the automation rules when we have an up condition. And in the market timing down, we just 
choose no action. We will sell stocks if they meet our sell criteria during a primary wave down, but we won't replace them or open any new positions until we have a primary wave up. And that is pretty much the setup uh, for our back test. Under edit account positions or settings, you will set this up the way you like it. I have a default $100,000 portfolio, commission $495 uh, for the Canadian market, and execute buys and sells at the next day's open, execute in daily pricing mode. So that's the account settings. And we just click OK. And then you would go ahead and finish, but you don't click the finish button over here at the right. You want to make sure you click finish, execute manually. So we're going to do a manual back test because we are going to be looking at all the graphs of all the stocks that are purchased and make a notation on paper of where we would place the entry. Logically, reasonably, where would I have sold this position if I actually owned it using the setup in the, in the graph that I just showed you on the earlier slide and the choices for exiting a position. All right, so we would just click Finish and Execute manually, and then we would go ahead and run our test. So with that set up in place, I'm going to now just edit the enhanced near-perfect indicator manual that I have here. So I'll just click on Edit. Sorry, <laughs> I won't click on Edit. I'll click on Copy. This give it a name, essay, video, because it's a complement to the essay uh, that ran in the views on uh, June 30, 30th, uh, Thursday, June 30th. So it's a complement to that essay. And uh, set up with a name. And now I can just go ahead and, um, I, because of my trading system rules are exactly what they were before, I can just come down, make sure my date calendar is set to the dates that I want to do the testing. Uh, it remembered my date was, uh, start date was June, sorry, January 2nd, 2019. There's my end date, so I'll just click finish and execute manually. It makes sure that I actually want to do this and what I'm going to need to do, so I can click OK. And now I have a clean back test. Uh, the date line is all the way to June 24th. And so the first thing I want to do is bring that date line over to the far right. I can just come over with my mouse and grab it and start to move it along that way. Or I can come down to the date calendar in the center bottom of the layout and left click on the far left arrow. That moves the date line all the way to our start date. So that search uh, we're in a primary wave up, and so the search is going to look for candidates as of January 2nd, 2019, and will buy them at the open on January 3rd. So uh, all I have to do is click on the arrow here again in the bottom center to move forward one day to January 3rd. Now the run button is lit, so I know I have to run it to move it forward to that date. We have no holdings as of yet. I'll click on run. And you can see the execution. These are the shares that we are opening here. And at the next day's open, it already wants to sell uh, TRQ and replace it with a different stock. And so um, you'll, you'll see that in the pending orders. And we'll just let that go. TRQ actually, after we bought it, hit the sell rating. Uh, in VectorVest even before we could look at the graph. So uh, so it's going to be sold right away and replaced with OGI, a marijuana stock, the next day. All right, so we click on our arrow again to move one more day forward. And then we can look at our portfolio. So there's our portfolio. There's the dates that they were purchased. And see what's happening so far. And so from here, what you would do is left click on the top one, hold the shift key down, left click on the bottom one that highlights them all. We would now right click and view the stock graph. 
and we can just um, we can see it quite clearly here with the purchase date and the stock that was purchased so I don't need to open it up on a full full graph I'll come down to the bottom right with our date bar set to one year and I'll just hold my mouse down on it and move it all the way to the left until I get to around January 3rd 2019 So there we go. So that's just uh, set it to January 4th, 2019. And you can see that um, if I put on the date line, the five moving average of the 40 crossed on January 2nd, actually. We purchased the stock on January 3rd. There it is there. Let's move that over a little bit. And so our setup is all in place. We have a buy rating on the stock, actually the hold rating on this day, on January 3rd, it was a buy. Um, not part of the rules for the purchase, but it's always nice to see a buy rating. That means the stock is moving up and has acceptable fundamentals, according to VectorVest, to get a buy rating. So um, we would just go through now and um, move the date line forward and decide when would we sell this stock? Now you can move it one day at a time as I'm doing here. For the swing trader, you might have been selling here when the five crossed below the 40, but I use the long-term investor mindset. And so I see the five moving average on stop is well above the 40 and there's just starting to move trend higher to the upside. Uh, and the EMA squeeze is still in place, so I would just hang in on that position for a little bit longer and just keep going. And again, I'm doing it day by day. You can open up the entire graph and have a look where you would sell. So here I would note for me, a sell would be right in this area on May 1st when the five EMA Cross below the lower um, line in the in the uh, channel. Uh, that would be my line in the sand exit. If when I click on price and I see some candlestick patterns that are bearish up at the top, uh, and I see the five moving average of stop trending lower, the five moving average of RT trending lower and crossing below the 40. I might on some occasions sell a bit earlier when I see those situations, but my line in the sand is that five EMA crossing below the lower channel line. That's my exit. So you've written, you go through all the graphs and write down on paper where you would be selling. You're going to advance your back test forward to get to that sell point and then you would make your your sell all right so so let's um let's move forward now i should have made a note on one of these stocks where we were going to sell let's uh let's just quickly view uh, hbm again and just quickly move it back here All right, so take the price off. I like to look at it without the price. It's a little more clear. Let's put the date in here. I, think, I don't think I went back far enough. There's that first date. So we bought here and we are gonna sell April 29th. So we just write down on a piece of paper, April 29th, 2019. That's going to be our sell date. Click uh, X. So I do. I would do that with all ten stocks. Make a note of the dates that I'm going to be selling, and then I would always just come down to the center calendar and advance to the date of that first stock that needs to be sold. So HBM HBM may not be the first one. I don't know, but um, I made a note of the date. April 29th is when I would sell. So about a three month run on this one. So let's just go ahead using the double arrow to move uh, ahead a week at a time. 
and we'll just move it up to April 29th. Back arrow, just one date, so we're at April 29th. So uh, for sure, I know that's when I'm going to be selling HBM. Now, some other of these stocks may hit that sell signal, the, the recommendation sell. Prior to that, I want to make sure I see that, so I'll check the positions are closed. So I'll stop running when positions are closed, and then I can look at the graph on that sell date and make a decision whether I really want to sell or not. If I don't want to sell, I can I can delete the sell. Uh, so let's just move ahead. We've we've got our setup now to where the graph is going to go forward through some market timing signals here all the way to April 29th. And I'll just click on the run button. So the back test is going to move forward. You can see all the actions that are being taken over here. And notice uh, here we have a pending order sell long BTO and then buy CNQ. Now, if you didn't want to sell, maybe you looked at the graph and said, gee, I don't really want to sell BTO on that date. The five moving average of the stop is still well above the 40. Um, I, I think I'll stay in that stock a little bit longer. If that's the case, then you would just highlight it right here and come over to the right and click on the delete button. And it would ask you if you just really want to delete that order. And you could say, yes, I want to delete that order. It would remove it. And you also want to remove then the CNQ order. And then you don't have any orders pending anymore. And these are your 10 stocks. So then you would just continue the run but button to, uh, to keep your orders running or back test running. See how far you get before the next sell rating on a stock. So it didn't go very far. We've got, uh, well, it really wants to sell BTO. So this time we'll let it sell and it's going to buy AT, which actually turned out it does get picked up by the back tester uh, in this portfolio at some point along the way and turned into our biggest winner of all, actually. But here it got, um, it would be buying it now at this date. So let's click on the run uh, button. It'll automatically add those shares of AT, so I don't have to worry about that. We're trying to get to April 29th and then manually sell HBM. All right, so we're almost there. We'll click on the Run button. Now we're there. Notice our ARR is already at 105%, and we've got 75% winners. There's no pending orders, but we had looked at the graph and said, you know what, HBM is at a point where we want to sell it. it we are up 36 percent notice these gains this is what i love about this h uh, this near perfect indicator and letting our winners run with the enhanced graph layout uh, you do need some of these big winners every year to have success in your portfolio and this system allows your winners to run whether you sell a half a position early uh, or or just let your entire position run you're allowing yourself to get some big winners. So on April 29th, we want to sell HBM. And so I'm just going to click up here at the top right, the close position, I've highlighted it. So that's the only position it's going to close when I choose close selected. So I'll choose close selected. Let's me know the position, uh, the quantity to sell and the price it will sell it at. And I click OK. And ask me if I'm sure, and I say yes, I do. And it should populate our pending orders here with a sell order for HBM. Okay. So we're all set uh, now, and uh, I'm just going to go forward one more day to April 30th. I'll click on the Run button. You'll notice there's no, there was no pending order. Uh, given we're down to nine holdings and the reason there's no pending buy order is because we are in a primary wave down and remember we won't buy any stocks when we're in a primary wave down if you want to look closer at those signals you can magnify the chart for that section just hold your mouse down at the left there and and move to the right now you see the larger picture we're in a primary wave down now
and left click on the chart and drag it to the left and you bring it back to the date. All right, so everything is looking all good and uh, it'll go forward now until we add a new position. Let's see, the next primary wave up is on May 16th. So let's just go ahead with our date calendar. Let's go to May 15th, for example. Okay, so we've gone ahead to May 15th. We've lost a little bit. We're selling a, a position, it looks like. MG, we're still not in a primary wave up. So we'll just keep uh, going to another day, May 16th. All right, so we're down to an eight stock portfolio. Pending orders, we have, we're have we selling AT, and we've got three long positions to add. Uh, and with the sell of AT, AT and adding three, we'll be back to a 10 stock portfolio. All right, so that is your manual back test. Now, if you make a mistake and you want to go back and, and correct something, uh, you could come to Manage Portfolio here. You could edit transactions here at the bottom of your drop down menu. So it gives you some choices. Uh, you can sort by the trade date. Um, you can um, sort, sort by the description. Uh, but just look through and let's have a look here. Uh, let's, let's sort again by the trade date. And there's Magna. Say I didn't really want to sell Magna, even though it made $10,000. I didn't really want to sell on May 10th. I wanted to sell on May 11th. I would just click the edit button once it's highlighted. Click the edit button. It sets up my parameters, the date, May 10th. Sell long, Magna, that was the trade that was that was issued. And I I could say, well, I want to, I didn't really want to sell on that uh, date. Uh, or um, you know, I could uh, I could change any any of the price parameters. Maybe uh, there's a there's the different price that I want. So I would just go ahead and click OK. And if I just didn't want to do the sell at all, I would click on the delete the order, and it would just readjust my back test. All right, and I'll just cancel on that. So those are the elements of your back test. And once you get going on it, it takes. It takes a little while to get into the rhythm of the test. Uh, I would say that this this back test uh, over three and a half years uh, took me over a few days, about um, maybe six hours to, to do in total, uh, which is quite a lengthy period of time. You have to be fairly dedicated to the task. Um, but to my mind, when I saw the results, it was very well worth it. I mean, I knew that near, near perfect indicator was was a terrific indicator for when to buy. And I knew uh, the sell ratings or the choices on sell that I wanted to use. And it was just nice to, um, to see it in a complete back test. So you just run it all the way through that way. And uh, it's your back test. So let me just quickly go back up to the I think there's the ENP there's my original test so uh, that's the completed back test so again it takes a bit of time but I think it shows the efficacy of the strategy and especially the near perfect indicator and I, I hope you agree I hope you love it let's um, let's go back to the PowerPoint just quickly here let you know if you're new to VectorVest or you've seen it a few times but haven't tried it yet. Uh, we do have a Father's Day sale that's going on, so you can try it out for 30 days at 99 cents US dollars. Just call 1-888-658-7638 for a 30-day trial. And if you like this video, I hope you'll smash that like button to attract more uh, traders and investors to our VectorVest uh, YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, you can call support at that number or Drop me a quick email, stan.heller at vectorvest.ca. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you all safe investing. Take care, everyone.